just want to say um, that thank you, everyone, for being here because you could have been doing anything at lunch today. You could have been crawling underneath someone's leg, <laughs> or you could have been, you know, with your friends or playing ping pong. So I just really appreciate you guys being here because this is really important to me. Uh, it's really important to me to improve myself as a public speaker. I know communication is huge as a chiropractor, so I also encourage all of you to get up here and say things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also thank you to the speakers before for warming up the space for me. That's really huge because it was really cold at the beginning and you guys did a great job of warming it up. So, um, yeah, okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, I was thinking about what to talk about for a long time and I was thinking, you know, it might be really cool to talk about philosophy, it might be really cool to talk about, you know, why we're chiropractors or like what drives us or what we're, what's going through our heads while we're doing an adjustment. But then I thought, okay, all of those ideas are things that I think you would want to hear, and not necessarily what would be valuable for me to share with you. So anyway, let's just get right to the point, shall we? <laughs> um, I want to talk about... I, I want to talk about play, and the importance of play, because I grew up in a small town. Did anyone else grow up in a small town? Okay. I grew up in a small town outside of Philadelphia, and there was nothing to do growing up. Like, nothing to do. So what most kids did is they went off into the woods and got beer, and got drunk, or did all kinds of things. So, I didn't do that. I did something else. <laughs> um, I, I created a, a gang with my closest friends. Like, we branded each other with cigarettes, and that was great. I still have the, the brain here. Um, because we loved each other and we wanted to, to have like the solidarity manifested in reality, right? And so for fun, one of the things that we did in the small town is we would go uptown to where the police station was and we would get the police to chase us. <laughs> we wouldn't actually do anything bad. We'd like camp out in the tent in the back of my, my best friend Wade's house. And his parents obviously didn't know what we were doing. But we were like getting up at 2 a.m. and going uptown and like either setting off a little firework to get to get their attention, or like going uptown and like we would we would look over and they'd be sitting in the police car like like a hundred feet away. And it's dark and there's like a plant sitting here. And we just start like rocking the plant. <laughs> just kind of teasing them. And they would chase us. And they never once, not once, caught us. Because <laughs> Swarthmore, where I grew up, there aren't, it's a really safe community, it's super boring, tons of old people, and there's like, there's no fences. So like, you can run from yard to yard, it's very easy, and the, the cops are wheeling around in their cop cars, like, <laughs> lights and stuff, and we just play with them. And that was our form of play, because I have always needed to, to play. Because what it gives me, when, when I have that adrenaline and those endorphins running through my system, it helps me manage fear. And it helps me manage pain. And I, I, I have, like, I'm terrified. Like, I literally, like, I'm not afraid to admit that I'm terrified all the time. I'm just scared all the time. Like, I am scared every time. I will walk around and, you know, like, be scared of what this pillow could do, you know? <laughs> or what does it look like that I'm holding a pillow and talking to you? <laughs> you know, like fears that don't even, I mean, they exist because I created them, but like fear of looking good or looking bad, right? That aren't necessarily life-threatening or hurtful, but in a way, they affect us, right? So anyway, so play. So the other reason why, I just want you to know that uh, we, we did that with the police and, um, this is also like a confessional talk. <laughs> um, we also uh, broke in and stole cars. We never broke windows. We never kept the cars. We never smashed the cars. We always stole them and returned them. And the reason why we did this is because it was a challenge. It was like adrenaline rush. But we also really cared about our community. 
It was not a normal, everyday gang. This is like middle class, white, suburban America gang, right? So I really, I, I enjoyed doing that. We never got in trouble doing that either. We always returned the car um, or motorcycle. So, I mean, how many of you are actually interested in learning how to hotwire a car? Okay, let's just do that real quick right now. So, so the first thing is you have to get into the car, right? What's the easiest way to get into the car? Open. Window, right? Open the door. Sorry? Open the door. the door. Open the door. Exactly. So what we would do is we would always look for cars that were unlocked because in suburban America, especially like middle class, like roundly white, it's like a lot of people don't lock their doors, blah, blah, blah. So in the case that it was locked, we would have to get a jimmy. Anyone know what a jimmy is? Yeah, like you can use a coat hanger too. You just, you just get right in, into the window and it just has a little hook at the end. And it's either a flat piece of metal or a coat hanger. You just hook it and you just pop it up. Now, the only cars that this really works with are cars that are made like 94, 95 and earlier. So then, you're in the car, you're sitting in the driver's seat, the steering wheel's right here, you either like pull off the uh, under casing or you unscrew it. Once you get to the wires, you have three sets of wires. You have wires that are going to, <laughs> you have wires that are going to the controls on the right of the steering wheel, which is your windshield wipers, and you have wires going to the left, which are your blinkers, right? And hazards and whatever. And then there's there's ones in the middle, and it's usually three wires, it's usually like a yellow, a brown, and a red. The red's always the battery, like 95% of the time. And you just gotta hook that up with the starter, which is one of the other wires, and that's it. It's that easy. <laughs> so now you know how to hot wire a car. But it doesn't work on like later models or like, you know, Mercedes or like the smart cars where you just hit the button to start it. It's a lot more complicated. <laughs> Um, let's get back to the talk. So, how to hotwire your car. So that brings up that point, right? So like, why is my talk entitled How to Hotwire Your Car? Well, because for me, the way I hotwire my car is by just breaking myself out of my comfort zone and discovering some sort of play that exists when I do that, right? So, one of the really cool things, and this is why I want to talk to you guys about this, is because in chiropractic school, we're constantly faced with you know, what is the right way to do things? What are we doing here? We're like, especially in technique classes, when we're like, standing there and you know, you have, is that your chest right here? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> or whoever, right, who's telling you, you have to stand here, your, your foot has to be here, you have to be like that. Let me ask you guys something. Are we all the same size? Are we all the same shape? Do we all think the same way? <laughs> we all essentially, fundamentally, are one in that we all are made up of the same components, but we're very different. So, one of the reasons why I wanted to have this talk, which um, it, I hope someone's keeping my time because I have no idea. Okay. Um, is because I just encourage everyone, like, especially with adjusting. Because when we're there, obviously we want to do it right, we want to get it right, we want to like have it work. And for me, like the element of of play allows me to step, we've all heard this before, but you know, step out of the box or play in another sandbox. And I constantly hear from chiropractors who are super successful out there in the world that they have created their own technique. They've blended different techniques together. I've seen chiropractors do all kinds of crazy, like, dance moves while they're <laughs> adjusting or getting on top of people and putting their legs up. And they do an excellent job of what they do because they have discovered their voice within the box of the adjustment. Um, where am I at time? you got a few minutes. Great. So, what else could I share with you guys? You want to know how to break in anything else? <laughs> <laughs> um, so just, yeah, so also just to add to that story, once I hit 18, I stopped doing all those things. Because at that point I knew I could go to prison. And I didn't want to go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to find a new form of play, right? 
a new outlet for myself. So I started um, working with theater companies around Philadelphia. And then I ended up living in Italy for two years and studying theater there. And that was absolutely incredible. And yeah, I think, I think that's it. I don't, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs>